Now it's time to configure the NRT itself so that it can communicate with the NEON server. Uh, what we're looking at here is the main Startup v4 screen. You've got a list of icons down the left hand side that perform different functions. Um, first thing we have to do is select the scheme that we just uploaded to the NEON server. Uh, well, in truth, you don't actually have to select that scheme. Any NRT scheme will do for for our purposes. But we'll just select the same scheme that we just uploaded, which is the battery scheme. And you just double click to click on that, and it uh, pre-selects that scheme for, for use. You can confirm which scheme is loaded by looking at the status bar at the bottom of the start of V4 window. And we can see it says start of V4 scheme battery. And it tells you that it's configured for an NRT model C and D. So the main thing we need to do is plug the NRT into your laptop or connect your laptop top to the NRT. Now to do that we need to know what serial port is being used uh, to connect to the NRT. To check that we go to Windows Device Manager. So we go to Start Programs, right click on Computer Manage, and that brings up a computer, manage, computer management screen. We look for Device Manager, and then we look for Ports, Common LPT, and there will be a list of ports usually. Now, we have already plugged in our serial port, and we can see it down the bottom here. We're using a USB to serial converter because most laptops nowadays don't have real serial ports. Now the important thing to remember here is that it's out, been allocated by Windows to COM port 7. So we need to remember COM 7 back in startup v4. We switch back here, we use the connection button to select direct to COM 7. All of your laptop serial ports will be listed, we just select the, the correct one here and push connect. We can now close Close the serial port dialog. If you're going to use this port routinely with Startup v4, it's best to save the COM port in the scheme itself. So to do that, you would go to Scheme Editor on the left, the icon here, open the Scheme Editor. Now it's going to open the scheme that we selected automatically, and we just go to Settings, and we make sure under the communications dialog that we tick direct to COM7 and then we save the scheme. So what that does is it saves the COM port into the scheme. Every time you use that scheme it's going to use that same COM port. You won't have to select it using the connection uh, dialog. So we can close the scheme editor now. Now to configure the NRT we go to the second icon from the top which is configure initialize. That opens up the NRT configuration tool. This is by far the easiest way to, to configure an NRT. Um, you have to plug your NRT, your serial cable into the NRT and make sure your NRT is powered up. So the red LED, when you first turn on an NRT, will, will light solidly for 10 seconds and then go out. Um, and you always have to make sure that the NRT the red light on the NRT is not flashing. Um, if it is flashing, you have to wait for it to stop flashing. Normally, or well, most NRTs are configured on the server. If I show you that again briefly, on the loggers tab, there's a tick box on the right here that says auto cold boot. Most users have that pre-configured. And what that tick box does, it means that when you turn an NRT on, it will automatically try to connect to the NR to the NEON server uh, as soon as it powers up. So this is useful if your remote site ever loses power or you're running a solar powered system, power battery power is lost during the night perhaps if there's a, a, a battery going old. And when the sun comes up again, the power is restored, it will then automatically reconnect to the server. You won't have to send somebody out there to, to reinitialize the NRT. So that's a good thing. 
So the point is, when you first turn on an NRT, after the 10 second solid red light, which is just the NRT self-testing and powering up, the red light will probably be flashing until it connects to the server, in which case the light goes off and you can use this configuration tool to configure the NRT. So first thing we have to do is push the Retrieve NRT Settings button at the top right. So that connects to the NRT and you now see the configuration parameters that are already inside the, the NRT. The most important thing we need to change is the XRT ID. Now that will come with from the factory, it will probably be set to zero already. So we have to enter our the NRT of the site that we just added, which was 3276. And we also have to make sure that the server IP address is correct for the Neon server that, you, that your NRT is on. Now neon.unidata.com.au, the IP address is 202.36.29.11. So this particular NRT has already been set up. But if yours isn't, you would have to set that to the right uh, IP address. Username and password is not required. That's not the Neon server's username and password. That's the SIM card's username and password. They are normally unlocked, so you don't need a username and password. The APN is the APN of your SIM card's provider. We're using a Telstra SIM card and Telstra's uh, APN is normally telstra.internet, but it doesn't have to be because you can get non-standard APNs and uh, private APNs and, and that sort of thing. So you do have to set that correctly according to your SIM card's allocation. So once that is set, those parameters, especially the IP address and the XRT ID, you push configure NRT, that saves the configuration back out to the NRT. So while it, every, every time the start of V4 talks to the NRT, the NRT's red light will come on, uh, just, just so that you're aware of that. There's also a slide out panel here where you can view the commands that are being retrieved and exchanged between start of V4 and the NRT, but that's only for informational or diagnostics purpose. Uh, you don't really need to pay attention to that. We've saved the configuration back out to the NRT all we need to do is push the initialize button at the bottom right. There's a progress dialog at the bottom right of this configuration tool, so you can monitor the initialization as it progresses. Uh, as soon as we pushed initialize, you would have noticed that the red light on your NRT starts flashing slowly, roughly once a second. That will continue until it connects to the server, and we shall see a connected message in this progress dialog. Entering data mode. Now you'll notice that as the NRT actually connected to the to the Neon server, the red light was flashing very quickly, uh, and then it will go back to flashing slowly as it disconnects from the Neon server, and you'll get a lot of initialized dialog as we've seen here. So your NRT is now properly configured onto the Neon server. We can go back to the Neon server web page, refresh the page, and we now see on the right area over here that the last comms time has just been updated, and that confirms that the logger connected to this particular node on the Neon server. Each time the NRT communicates with the server, which will be every 60 minutes in this case, the last comms time gets updated. So that's a confirmation that the NRT is still, still talking to the server and delivering data into the server. Because we've only just initialized the NRT, it hasn't actually had time to collect any data, so it hasn't sent any data to the NEON server. Uh, we can, however, look at the real-time data tab and we can see here one entry, which is also at the same time as the last comms time, or near enough. Uh, and real-time data is just diagnostics information. Uh, the useful things here are signal strength, RSSI, 
which is zero in this case, but that's typically the case when you first initialize an, N, initialize an NRT. Uh, but normally RSSI has to be, I don't know, at least 85, typically 65 perhaps. If you're seeing a number like minus 100, then you have very poor signal strength and you, you really shouldn't expect your NRT to connect to the server reliably. If that's the case, you need to fit an external antenna or relocate the NRT to a better reception site. Uh, just to show you, if we go over to the Data Channels tab, the channels status here are all listed as pending. That's because no data has actually been received from the NRT in the field yet. But uh, when the NRT next communicates and data comes into the server, status will change and the data times and values will be updated with the real information that has been sent from the field. So until happens, that happens, there's not much else to, to do except wait for the data to, to come in when the NRT next communicates.